I recently took a survey on Twitter asking if I should add tests to the beginning of these episodes, and I got a lot of great responses. Thank you, everyone. Now, while I don't plan to add tests to the beginning of every episode, I do hope to cover testing more in the future and show you how I would test some of the earlier topics. Now, in this episode, I'll be showing you how I would test the previous episode, specifically the forgotten password link that I added there. Now, we'll be starting with the same application I did in the previous episode, where I have some basic authentication set up, but notice no forgotten password link, because we're going to add this through test-driven development, which is by far the way I prefer to do it instead of adding tests after the fact. Now, normally in these screencasts, you see me test the functionality of the app through the browser, but in my everyday work, I don't do this. I mostly keep the browser closed and use tests to actually test the functionality and only open the browser when I need to focus on the user experience. So here's a little challenge for you. Next time you find yourself testing functionality through the browser, close the browser and write some tests. Now I'll start off by adding a few testing gems to my gem file to set up the testing environment the way I like it. Now notice this is a Rails 3.1 app here, but this should work just as well in a Rails 3.0 app. So at the bottom of this gem file, I'll add a few gems. And I prefer RSpec, but really any testing framework will do. Uh, you can pretty much simulate the, the same thing I'm doing here. Notice RSpec is in the development environment, so the rake tasks run properly. And I also like to use Factory Girl instead of Fixtures. I use Capybara for simulating the user. Awesome gem, highly recommend it. And Guard for automatically running these specs after I save the file. Now I've covered these gems in detail in previous episodes, so I'll link to those in the show notes. Now we can run the bundle command to install those gems and run the rspec install generator to install rspec. I'm gonna set up a few more directories here while we're at it. Spec support is a nice place to put support files so they automatically load. Uh, spec models and spec uh, routing so guard doesn't complain. Speaking of guard, we can run guard and it rspec to generate that guard file. And if you're on a Mac, you'll want to install the rbfs event gem so that guard can detect the file changes. All right, I think that's it. Now we can just start up guard and keep it running in its own background in a tab. Now I need to enable capybara in that generated spec helper file by just adding this little line here. And while I'm at it, I'm going to remove the fixture path line because I'm not using fixtures anymore. Now let's get started testing. I love to start off with what Rails calls an integration test. And we'll call it password reset. And notice that the RSpec generator is going to take over here and actually create what it calls a request spec. And here's what that request spec looks like. So let's just remove these default settings here. And I like to say something like it emails user when requesting password reset. Now to accomplish this, we need a user record in the database to work off of. Now we could go through the entire signup page to register a new user, but I think it's okay to skip a few steps to focus on really what you want to test in the integration test. So let's actually create a user through a factory. Uh, let's call it a user factory. And then inside the spec directory, let's make a new factories file, which will automatically be loaded by factory girl. And then I'll just paste some code in here for a simple user factory it just contains an email and password, just like that. So now that we have an actual user record, we can simulate what the user would do through Capybara. So uh, let's first visit the login path. And then from here, we want to uh, click on the forgotten password link. So we can say click link uh, password, and it'll just look for any link with the word uh, password in it. I just like to use keywords there so I can kind of change the wording around that. And then I can uh, fill in an email address field here with the user's email address, user.email, and then we'll click on a button that says uh, reset password, just like that. Now, even though I'm not all done writing this spec, you can see that guard already found an error here saying that there's no password link. So let's work on fixing this. So on the login page, I'll just paste in the forgotten password link that we added in the previous episode. This goes to a new password reset path. And because we don't have that made yet, you can see that guard is complaining. There's no new password reset path. So I really like this approach of testing because it just walks you through, okay, what's the next step that I have to do to get this working? So to get this working, I can generate a new password resets controller like I did in the previous episode. But one little tip here is that when you're running a generator and you don't want the test generated, you can pass in no test framework and that won't generate the RSpec tests, which I don't really follow the pattern, so it works well for me here. 
So as you can see out of the files that were generated, there's no controller or view specs. Now I personally don't use them anyway because I feel that the request specs handle that well enough. If logic is too complex for the request spec, then it probably should go in the model anyway. Now let's fix the routes real quick like we did in the previous episode where we added a resources password resets. So now guard runs and we get this error saying no email field on the password resets page. So I'll change that password reset page to add a form with an email field here and a reset password button. So now we're getting a different error saying that there's no create action on the password resets controller. So let's make that. So inside of here, let's make that create action and then redirect to the root URL just so it has something to do. And there we go. Now we get a passing spec. So now let's expand our spec. So back in our request spec, let's say we also want a flash message that says that the email was sent. So we could say page.should have content, uh, email sent. And if you want to check which page that got redirected to and make sure it was at the root URL, you can say something like current path should equal root path. And that'll make sure that it redirected to the proper page if you want to check that. And of course that fails because we don't have an email sent flash message. So going to our controller, we can add that flash message. So it says email sent. And then our spec is passing again, but there's actually no email being sent out here. So how do we add a test for that? Well, inside the request spec, we can call action mailer base.deliveries to access an array of delivered uh, email messages. So we can say last on this to fetch the last one. Now I expect to do this quite frequently throughout my specs. So I'm going to move this into an external support file. So inside our spec support directory, we can make a new file here called uh, mailer macros. And we'll make a module inside of here with that same name. And we'll make a method called last email, which will do just that, fetch that last email. Now, I also want another method inside of here called reset email so that we can, at the beginning of each uh, spec, we can actually reset this. So inside of here, it'll just reset it to an empty array so that it clears out any delivered email previously. So this means inside our spec helper file, we can call config.include to include that mailer macros module. And we can call it config. Uh, before each to actually call reset emails before each uh, spec is run so that it clears out delivered email. So now inside our request spec, we have this handy little last email method we can use to fetch the last email message which was sent and say if the two should include the user's email because we want to send an email to this user. And this is going to fail because last email is nil because we don't have an email that's being sent out yet. So to send email, we need to generate a mailer. So we'll generate a user mailer with a password reset uh, message. Now this generator created a mailer spec file, which I'll get to a little bit later, but for now I'm just going to comment this out. Now what I wanna focus on is the user mailer itself. So I'm going to change this to what we created in the last episode, which is this password reset method, which accepts a user, so that way we can send it to the specific user's email address. So now inside our password resets controller, we can actually send an email in this create action here. So user mailer dot password reset pass in our user object, which we don't have yet, and say deliver. So we need to fetch our user, which is user find by email, and the passed in email from the uh, text field the user types in. And now our spec passes because we're now sending an email to that user. Now even though the spec is passing, our functionality is far from complete because we're not you know, generating a new reset token and we're not passing that into the email or anything. However, I don't feel that those details need to be inside of the request spec. I like to keep the request spec simple as sort of a general sketch and flow of what the user is actually concerned with. In this case, it just makes sure that the user actually receives an email. Uh, we can use lower level tests to handle all the details and uh, all the branching paths if there are any. When you reach this point, a good next step is to look for some functionality that you can move into the model and then you can build upon that. For example, this user mailer deliver method, we can move that into a user method called uh, send password reset, and then make that send password reset method inside of that user model. In this case, we're passing in self instead of the user. Let's make sure the specs are still passing, and they are. 
So now we can add some model specs for fleshing out this functionality. So we'll say uh, user spec.rb. To speed things up, I'm just going to paste in a few user specs inside of here. So basically, whenever we call the send password reset method, we want it to do three things. One is to generate a unique password reset token every time. And that checks for that. Another is to make sure that our password reset sent at is set. And then finally, we just want to make sure that it delivers an actual email. And currently, this is the only thing that it does, but let's implement it so that it does these other things as well. Now, you may have noticed I'm calling let user up here. This basically will assign the user to a factory user before each of the specs. Now, currently, two of these specs are failing because we don't have two of these password reset columns in our table yet. So let's run the same migration generation command that we did in the previous episode to add those columns. Then we'll run right db migrate uh, to add them. So now you can see that those specs are still failing because our token and our sent at attributes are not being set in that method. To fix this, we have to do what we did in our previous episode where we have this generate token method, which generates a unique random token. And we just generate our password reset token set our sent at time, and then uh, deliver our email. And now you can see all our specs pass, yay! So now we can adjust the mailer spec that we commented out to make sure that our mailer works correctly. So let me add a let line in here for let user, and use our factory in here, factory user, and pass that in to our mailer password reset call. And inside of here, let's just say that it, it sends user uh, password reset URL. And in here, we want to send to the user's email. And the subject can be password reset. And it will contain the password reset URL. So that's edit password reset path with the user's password reset token. We should probably actually set that up here in the factory password reset token can be really just anything, just as long as it matches. And as you can see, our spec fails because it doesn't contain that password reset path. So let's add that to our email. So I'll just paste this in from what we created in our last episode. So this way it'll use the password reset token in the URL here. So now our specs are complaining that it doesn't have a host option for sending email. So we're going to have to set this in our environment config file. So inside our test.rb config file, we can go to the bottom here and then paste in a line that looks like this. It basically just sets our host config option. I believe that this is the default that it's going to use. So we can just set it to that so it matches. Uh, you'll want to set this in your development and production environments as well. And then you can see that now all of our specs are passing. By the way, here's a quick tip. If you're in guard, you can run all the specs with control backslash and it'll just run all the specs again. I find the hardest part about testing is just getting started and establishing your workflow. Once you do, it's really easy just to copy and paste tests to add variations and expand functionality. For example, what if we want to test the case where a user tries to enter an invalid email address? In that case, we might say it does not email user or invalid user when requesting password reset. So in this case, we don't have a user record and we just try to enter an email address that doesn't match. So uh, nobody at example.com. And then when it gets through the process, our last email should be nil because it should not send an email to that user. At least this is the way the, uh, the user experience was in the previous episode, but you might want to adjust it. Either way, you should have a spec for it uh, for that case. Well, if you check it out, you can see that, well, the spec fails because we didn't handle that case where a user wasn't found. So in our controller, we just want to send our password reset if our user actually exists. And there we go, that satisfied the test case. So now all of our tests are passing again. So with this testing pattern established, it's pretty easy to just go into the request specs and add additional functionality for the password resetting where they actually go in and edit the password, make sure that the password hasn't expired, uh, test cases where the password token is invalid and so on. I will include the rest of this password reset functionality in the source code for this episode, so be sure to check that out if you're interested in seeing more examples of how to do request specs. Well, that's it for this episode on testing the forgotten password link. 
It'll now properly send an email to the user and that part's fully tested. Now I realize that testing is a very controversial subject and you may have different ideas on testing and how to properly test, but whatever the case, the most important thing is that you do test. And if you have trouble testing right now, or if you aren't testing at all, please try the technique I showed here. I found it to be rather easy to apply to most Rails apps and uh, the payoff is well worth it.